This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnston. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 82. Wow. And in today's show, I speak to Dan the Man about Donald Trump. Um, You've probably heard of that person and I'm not going to tell you any more now because you can listen in the show. Anyway, remember, all of the rock and roll vocabulary is on the website rockandrollenglish.com. Go there, use the vocabulary if the website's working and have fun. But most of all, happy listening. Dan the man, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Always fantastic, Dan. Um, Have you been inspired by anything recently? Vincent van Gogh? Uh, No, no art, no. You? No, Dan, I'm never inspired. Um, But anyway, how do we start the show? Uh, With a review. Oh, yeah, baby. I know you know we have one, so I'm not going to ask. Remember, I only ask when I have the possibility to embarrass you. I didn't know we had one, actually. Oh, sure you didn't. Sure you didn't. Um, Anyway, it's from Fabrizio Zitoli, I think, is the pronunciation. And it says, what can I say? More than a Facebook fan, I'm a podcast listener. I would say I'm an addicted listener of Martin and Dan. Martin first, as I know how much he cares. Thank you, Fabrizio. Yes, I do care. Um, But let me say that being in touch with Dan for the members group inclusion, I discovered he's not so rude, naive, (laughs) unenthusiastic as Martin lets the people think. I thought he was kind of a Dan the Caveman, which I think is a fantastic uh, nickname. Um, Otherwise, he's very polite, efficient, nice and definitely a perfect gentleman. I'll increase my presence here on Facebook from now on. Thanks a lot and always keep on rocking. Perfect gentleman, hey? Well, that's like almost a Dan the Man review. Have you you ever had anyone say that about you? Uh, That's a good question, Dan. At the moment, I can't think of anyone, um, but hopefully one day it will happen. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully one day. Anyway, thanks a lot for that, Fabrizio. Um, And let's get on with today's show. Do you know what the show's about, Dan? I have no idea. Oh, no. Um, So, obviously, the last show was about inspiration. So I thought, you know, who could we look for for inspiration? Someone that really inspires everyone. And I found someone, Dan. You're not doing yourself, are you? (laughs) No, but maybe we should do that um, in the future. Oh, no. It's uh, Mr. Donald Trump. Ah, great. This is hours worth of material. Oh, yeah. Maybe this is just like part one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Because I found out recently it's been over a year um, since he took over as the president. You know he he is the president of America, right, Dan? Yeah, I did know. And it's been well over a year. Well, exactly. Well over a year. Um, Anyway, so I've got some facts we can talk about, um, Donald. And then I've got some quotes that we can look at. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, baby. So I thought we could start with his barnet. Um, What do I mean, his barnet, Dan? His hairstyle. Similar to yours, actually. (laughs) What are you talking about? Just a little bit shorter. My hair and Donald Trump's hair could not be any more different. Okay, sure. Um, But yeah, anyway, the word barnet means hair in England actually comes from Cockney rhyming slang. But we won't get into that. Um... What does it mean, get into something, Dan? To start something. Yeah, to start talking about that. That's, you know, a whole podcast in itself. So, apparently, Donald's wife, Melania, I don't know, cuts his hair for him, which I found quite interesting, considering he's a billionaire. But I just wondered, Dan... And and she's into fashion. Is she? I I don't know, Dan. I didn't didn't know you were into the Trumps so much. I I think she used to be a model, didn't she? I have absolutely no idea. But when Dan said um, she's into fashion, it means she's interested in it. it. And Dan is into the Trumps. He is interested in the Trumps. I like to keep one eye on them. One eye, sure. Just to make sure they're not, you know, getting up to anything strange, which means doing something strange. Anyway, Dan, I thought, have you ever let anyone sort of non-professional cut your barnet? 
I actually let Mrs. Dan the Man do it a few weeks back when I I had my hair cut properly last week, but in the time before that, I needed it trimmed up, so uh, I asked her to help out. Oh, yeah. So he says trimmed up. He just means a little cut there. Um, as I've said before, Dan the Man still has the same haircut that he's had since he was... Well, yeah, since he was four or five, I that's, think. That's not true. I used to have curtains when I was about 13. Oh, yeah? Did you? Oh, so curtains was a very sort of 90s um, haircut. David Beckham had it, and I had it, so that's probably why Dan did, because he saw me yeah, and then thought, hmm, that looks good. Yeah, of course. You should grow your barnet like mine, Dan. Jesus Christ, you're having a laugh, aren't you? I would look ridiculous. I mean, you look ridiculous as well, but everyone accepts you for that. If I did that, I would have, well, no friends. Well, you haven't got many at the moment, have you? Exactly, and I'm clinging on to them. <laughs> so he says I'm clinging on to them. He means I'm holding on to them. Also, some nice second conditional in there, Dan. If I did that, I would have no friends. Um, anyway, so spe- speaking of hair, apparently Trumpy is uh, terrified of going bald and says it's a sign of weakness and says the worst thing a man can do is go bold. Well... <laughs> He's going bald, so... <laughs> exactly. exactly, that's what I thought. He's very thin on top. So when yeah. someone is very thin on top, it means they haven't got a lot of hair at all. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's just the start. That's just a little warm-up, Dan. Things are going to get heated now. Um, so, Donald says that his second favourite book is called The Art of the Deal. Do you know who wrote that book? He wrote that book. He wrote that book. So that's his second favourite book. Have a guess what his first... I was going to say his first favourite. His, just his favourite is fine. Uh, I don't know. His, the Bible? Correct, Dan. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I thought about this and I thought, you know, people say he's sort of arrogant and stuff like this. But he's not so arrogant because he said his book is not the best in the world. It's only the second best. Second to God's book. So... yeah. Yeah, it's uh, as good as it gets. Yeah, exactly. He said, like, you know, I am amazing, but God is better than me. So, okay. Yeah. Have you have you read his book? <laughs> Why would I read a book by Donald Trump? Have you? No, no, but I would like to read it. <laughs> I can't say I would be that uh, interested in reading it. Um, have you read the Bible, though, Dan? No. We read the Bible a lot in school. Yeah, keep that quiet, all right? <laughs> Dan and I went to a Catholic school and uh, there was a moment in the week called Reflection Time where we had to read a part of the Bible and reflect on our week. Yeah, and give a, an interpretation of the passage. <laughs> Fucking... Yeah, oh, they were some good times. I did a lot of reflecting. When you're sort of like 13, you know, reflecting on your week, reading the Bible is not something... <laughs> First thing Monday morning as well yeah, sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, anyway, so I have something here about his school career. So when he was a second grader, which is an American term for the second year of school. So when you have like, like when you're five, I imagine, mm -hmm. um, he was convinced the music teacher didn't know what he was talking about. So, you know, what else could he do except punch him in the face? So Donald <laughs> Trump punched the music teacher in the face and the teacher ended up with a black eye. So phrasal verb there, ended up. It wasn't his intention to have a bl black eye because obviously he didn't expect a child to punch him. But that's what he did. There's a few teachers I would have liked to have punched in the face. <laughs> I thought there were five. if a five-year-old punches you and you end up with a black eye, I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's... That's a sign of weakness, not going bald. If a, if a five-year-old punches you and your eye goes black... How could he even reach? He must have been standing on a table. He probably called him towards him. Come here for a second. Well, I've got I've got to tell you something. And then, bam. You seem like you know how to do this, Dan. Maybe you were thinking about that for years. Those years of frustration in school of teachers ignoring you. So yeah, they maybe did. that's the plan you came up with. <laughs> they really did, didn't they? I, I think I've just got a lot of similarities with, you know, the leader of the free world. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Well, you are a freelance human being, Dan, so it exactly. must be the case. Um, so when I said they came up with this plan, when you come up with a plan, it's like invent a plan. Um, because of this bad behaviour, his parents sent him to military school when he was a teenager to straighten out his behaviour. What does it mean to straighten out your behaviour, Dan? 
to make him well behaved you know well exactly so there off he went to military i was thinking dan who would be better in the military me or you oh one million percent me <laughs> you couldn't cut it at all so when he says you couldn't cut it it means that you couldn't handle it you couldn't manage it oh and you could i'd be a lot better than you i can promise you that the last time i went on holiday with a da- with dan we saw a moth which is basically <laughs> a fly and dan jumped under the bed this okay. isn't true. This isn't true. It is one hundred percent true. If you were in the military, what would you do if you, I don't know, saw a bomb? If you shit your pants when you see a fly? Listen, that moth story is not true, and you know it. <laughs> that moth story is one hundred percent true. I honestly thought a man had come in with a gun, and I was like, "What? What is it? What is it? There's a moth! There's a moth! Get it away! Get <laughs> it away!" You know that's not true. Okay, the impression bit at the end was made up. So I say made up, it was invented. The whole thing's made up. But the other part was 100% true. No, no. Anyway, staying on the topic of education, apparently he got an an honorary degree from a Scottish university, uh, which already is a complete joke, in my opinion, these honorary degrees. People go to university, study for years, and a celebrity, just for being famous, gets the degree. Yeah, that's a joke. But then they took the um, degree away from, from him after he said Muslims should be banned from the US. Um, so he hasn't even got the honorary degree anymore. But I was thinking, can degrees get taken away? Can someone take my degree away? No, I, don't, I, don't, I think only honorary degrees can be taken away, can't they? Well, I've I've no idea, Dan, because I was starting to worry because I say a lot of stupid shit on this show. So maybe I'm going to... I'm going to get a phone call saying, you know, you don't even know how to say Vincent van Gogh right, so they might take my degree away. Yeah, good point. Um, Although going back to the degree thing, I was thinking that's luckily not a problem for you, is it? Someone taking your degree away. Correct. (laughs) Just That's just another punch there, Dan. Every (laughs) podcast is sort of, for me, is a boxing match, okay? It's points. Who can hit the most punches? I went to the University of Life and failed. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I think you've actually earned a point now for that great joke, Dan. Thank you. No problem. Um, Anyway, so he's a perfect family man, is Mr. Donald Trump. Um, He said he always respected his parents, which is good because, you know, not many people respect their parents in the world, do they? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I like good weather as well. (laughs) So, you know, that's good. Thanks for that, Donald. And he said, my father was always the power and breadwinner so remember a breadwinner is the person that buys the bread and buys everything for the family let's say we had this before when we discovered mrs dan the man is the breadwinner in no Dan's she house. is not the breadwinner <laughs> jesus christ just another punch there dan um and he said and my mother was the perfect housewife so that's good thanks donald <laughs> yeah, i bet she's thrilled to hear that <laughs> So when he says, I bet she's thrilled, it means I bet she's happy. And he's got five children, and the first one is called Donald Jr. And I just thought... Why do that? I never understand this Jr. thing. Is that is Jr. part of the name? So his name is actually... When he writes his name on, I don't know, his passport, does it say Donald Jr. Trump? I don't know. I haven't seen his passport, but probably... It's a very strange one, that, isn't it? And given your son, your name, and even the junior part, it means like you're inferior to me. When when Donald Jr. is 60, is he still calling himself Donald Jr.? Yeah, exactly. Does it ever reach Donald Sr.? I don't know. I, I, I heard an interesting story about Donald Trump when he was talking about his dad because people were saying he wasn't a self-made man, that um, he relied on his dad's money to be rich in business. And Donald Trump turned around and said, no, I am a self-made man. When I was starting out, I I took a small $14 million loan from my father (laughs) and started my business. A very small loan. Yeah. Um, Who hasn't had a $14 million loan? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, So he once sued someone. So what does it mean if you sue someone, Dan? When you take someone to court to get money from them for something they've done. Exactly. And this person did something extremely bad. He called Trump a millionaire instead of a billionaire. Are you serious? I mean, is there any offence bigger than that in the world? Is that serious? 
Yes, yeah, hundred percent serious, and he sued him for five billion dollars. So you know, he, he didn't win though, did he? Uh, I didn't read that much, Dan. I only read the quick facts, just like the shit things on sort of Huffington Post or whatever. Um, And speaking of Huffington Post, that brings me very nicely to a quote um, when he was talking about Ariana Huffington. And he said, she is unattractive, both inside and out. I fully understand why her former husband left her for a man. He made a good decision. (laughs) Okay, well, thanks for that, Donald. I don't know what Ariana ever did to him, but, you know, that was a very nice thing to say. And he's the president of the United States now. Yep, exactly. So some other things that he's done. He was um, inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. So that's the wrestling. I mean, that was in 2007. And when the people are voting for the president, they must just think, okay, so there's this guy, you know, he's a complete clown. He's done some wrestling. Is he a good person to be the president? Well, yeah, of course. Did you, did you see that 20 years ago, 25 years ago, he was on TV and someone asked him, will you ever run for president? And he said, uh, if I did, I would run as a Republican because they're so stupid they'd vote for anything. <laughs> well, he's been proved right. Um, speaking of TV, though, he also was in Home Alone and The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I didn't know who was in The Fresh Prince. Oh, he was in The Fresh Prince, baby. Um, and one more fact I've got here is that he dislikes shaking hands with people because he has a thing about germs. So when I say that he has a thing about germs, it's when you have strong feelings for, about something that are generally unreasonable. And apparently he specifically avoids touching the hands of teachers because they are in contact with kids. He just punches them in the face, doesn't he? <laughs> that's just a way to say hello just a straight punch in the face i thought when you meet someone does he say to them like what's your job before he shakes hands i don't know it's a yeah he's a politician so he has to touch people shake their hands i mean (laughs) yeah when you say touch people it does sound a bit strange yeah (laughs) yeah um anyway so let's get to more some of let's get to some of these quotes now dan um so one of them this is one of his most famous ones i think Um, This was obviously before he became president and he said, I will build a great wall and nobody builds walls better than me. I didn't know he was famous for building walls in all of the facts. I hadn't I hadn't come across this building walls. So when I say I hadn't come across the phrasal verb there to mean I didn't find it by chance, let's say. You've never read his book. I'm sure he talks about walls all the time. (laughs) Walls are bloody interesting as well, aren't they? So when I say bloody there, it's like an English way to sort of emphasise, to say really. Um, He doesn't finish there, though. So he says, and nobody builds walls better than me. Believe me. And I'll build them very inexpensively. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border. And I will make Mexico pay for that wall. Mark my words. Did you hear when, obviously, the Mexican... um president i think it's the president came out and said we're not paying for the wall donald trump replied it just got uh 10 feet higher (laughs) well even this quote when he says um so i'll build the wall i'm great at building walls i'll build it inexpensively and i will make mexico pay for it already that's a contradiction who's paying for this wall yeah i know um but when he says there mark my words it's a very sort of Well, actually quite a funny thing to say when you're certain something will happen and basically saying, listen to me. Um, But there's been no news on the wall, has there? I haven't heard anything about the wall yet. I haven't heard anything either. Well, I'm looking forward to this wall. Are you? (laughs) Well, I want to see how great this wall is because apparently no one builds walls better than Donald. But, But just to clarify, he doesn't agree with the wall. I do not agree with the wall, okay? Um... He also says, another one, the beauty of me is that I'm very rich. I might start sentences like that, I think. The beauty of me. <laughs> yeah, even... The... In fact, I was more concentrated on the second part of the sentence, but now you say that, the first part's not great, is it? Yeah. <laughs> the great thing about me is, Dan... You know... <laughs> And then to say, I'm very rich, like that's a real sort of inner beauty thing, isn't it? Something you can really appreciate. Like, that person's just really rich. What a what a wonderful thing. 
Yeah. Well, it's all he's got, really, isn't it? <laughs> well, his favourite book is the Bible, so he can't be that bad. Yeah, you've read the Bible. I mean, you buy the Bible last year. <laughs> no, you did. I'm sure you bought the Bible because you wanted to read through it. I can guarantee you that is not true. Um, although, very possibly, I mentioned about 10 years ago when I read a book from Oscar Wilde, just to show how intelligent I am there. I read Oscar Wilde books. Um, and he mentioned when he was in prison, he read the Bible and it was wonderful because of all of the crazy stories. Yeah, I'm sure it wasn't 10 years ago. But it definitely was. Um, speaking of the Bible, a famous English comedian says the first line of the Bible is... Um, on the first day, God built heaven and earth. Didn't go into detail, so. <laughs> yeah, that's done. <laughs> okay, that's finished. Next, what's next? <laughs> heaven and earth, boom. Day two. It's not bad for a day's work, isn't it? Well, that's not bad at all, Dan, at all. Um, so anyway, I've got some more quotes here um, because he was famous for a TV program called The Apprentice and he once said, all the women on The Apprentice flirted with me. Consciously or unconsciously, that's to be expected. Isn't unconscious when you're not awake? Yes, that's. I think he's made a mistake with the language there. Unconscious is when someone like hits you in the head and you fall to the floor. Maybe she was a teacher and he punched well, her. Maybe he punched her, yeah. I think he means subconsciously. Um, unless, well, flirting when you're not awake and you can't move is quite difficult. Mm-hmm. Sounds like sexual assault to me. Well, well, apparently he's been um, sued 35 times for sexual assault as well. So that's not bad. Again, this is what I was talking about, the voters. So they've got someone here who has been in wrestling, who says all of these ridiculous things, who's been sued many times for sexual assault. We know his most, the main thing about him is that he's rich and people think, you know what? I just think he'll be a great person to manage this country. Get him in. Do you think uh, he's going to uh, sue us? Oh, shit, I didn't think about that. Yeah. <laughs> we we often speak bad about America on the show. Now we're speaking about um, him. I don't know. Well, yeah. at worst, I'm going to lose my degree, I think. Well, sorry, at best, I will lose my degree. At worst, Donald will come and kill us. Mm -hmm. I've got no and degree to lose, so I've got nothing to lose. So it's Nothing to lose. Bring it on. Speaking of sort of killing people, he said... Why can't we use nuclear weapons? So, you know, good point. Good point. I, I can't Go think free. of one bad reason. Okay, just killing you know millions of innocent people. That's fine, obviously. Yes, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's it's dangerous. Well, that's it, Dan. We, we, we live a dangerous life, you and I. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, let me just see how long we've been talking. Oh, shit, I'm talking 24 minutes. So I'll, I'll try and finish with one. Good one. So we'll finish on, in my opinion, the most outrageous and creepy one, basically. Remember, creepy is like a disturbing thing. Uh, he's talking about his daughter, Ivanka. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I've heard this one. Although I noticed there's not... A Melania Junior. There's a Donald Junior, but his wife, when there was a girl, didn't get a Junior. But never mind. So he said, "I've said if Ivanka weren't my daughter, I'd be dating her." <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be embarrassing for her as well. <laughs> oh my God! Could you imagine, like, if your mum just come out and said, "You know, I would love to go out and with my son." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'd be fucking awful. Well, anyway, all I can do is say thank you, Donald, for your inspiration. I can tell you I'm a much more inspired person right now. And I can see Dan's face and I can tell you he is too. Just don't sue us. Just don't sue us. Do you, do you think if um, he can become President of the United States, that there's a chance, an outside chance, that I could still become the Prime Minister of England? I think there's more than an outside chance, Dan, okay? I'm going to give you some advice, like I always do, and my advice is keep the dream alive, okay? You can do it, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and on that note, we can say goodbye. I'll see you later, Dan. Speak to you later. See you later. <laughs>
Okay, so that was Dan the Man and me speaking about Mr. Donald Trump. Let's look at some of that rock and roll vocabulary. We had the word barnet, which remember means hair in England. Um, It comes from Cockney rhyming slang, as I said in the show. I'll probably tell you more about that another time. Um, Anyway, I said I didn't want to get into Cockney rhyming slang, which means I don't want to start talking about it because, as I said, there's a lot to say. Um, We had Dan saying that Trump's wife is into fashion. If you're into something, you are interested in it. I'm into football. You're probably into something else. Um, We also had the term get up to something strange which basically means do something strange. Um, Dan said um, he had his hair trimmed, which is just like a little cut, let's say. He actually used the term trimmed up, but it's the same. Um, Dan also used the term clinging on when he's clinging on to his friends. He's doing his best to hold on to them. It's not easy, but he's really trying. He's clinging on to them. And we had Donald again when we said um, he's going a bit thin on top. If you're going thin on top, basically, you're going bald. But apparently that's a sign of weakness, says Donald. Um, We also had the phrasal verb, end up. We had that last week. So you don't want to do something, but in the end, you do it. Always followed by the ing. The teacher ended up getting a black eye, for example. Oh, yeah, that's rock and roll grammar, baby. And we had the phrasal verb, come up with a plan so when you come up with a plan or an idea you basically invent it let's say and we had straighten out usually used with behavior like this to straighten out someone's behavior trump was sent to the military why to straighten out his behavior to basically make it good is a sort of stupid way or strange way to say that Um, dan said i couldn't cut it in the military so if you can't cut it you can't handle it A football example would be a player who can't cut it in the Premier League. He's not good enough. He doesn't have the ability. He can't handle it. Um, We also had the word moth, which is like an insect, a fly. There'll be a picture on the website of that because it's difficult to describe. Um, I said that I made up the impression about Dan, which is like invented it. But the rest of that story is true. Believe me, he nearly shit his pants because of a very very small insect a fly we had breadwinner which remembers the person that buys all of the stuff in the house in the old days was obviously the man the breadwinner the person that paid for everything basically we had the word thrilled which means happy when dan said um, i bet she's thrilled to hear that and um, we also had the term sue when you sue someone you take them to court and basically try and get money from them if it's the other way around you are getting sued um we also had the term have a thing about when trumpy uh, we talked about his thing of having a thing about germs if you have a thing about something it's you have like an unreasonable reaction let's say i have a thing about people sitting on my bed with clothes on i just don't like it it's dirty and um, we had the verb come across when you come across something it's like you find it by accident we also had the term bloody when i said walls are bloody interesting british way to say really basically but it's not very formal so don't really use that all of the time um we also had mark my words something you say at the end of like a speech i could say to you Rock and Roll English will be the best podcast in the world. Mark my words. Like one day in the future. I mean, so you can hold me to that, let's say. And we also said creepy, which is like disturbing and strange. Very much like Mr. Donald Trump himself. Anyway, all of this rock and roll vocabulary is on the website, rockandrollenglish.com. Hopefully the website's working. If it's not, relax, take a deep breath, and most importantly, just keep on rocking thanks so much for listening to rock and roll english for more great content and to stay up to date visit rock and roll english.com and facebook.com slash rock and roll english we'll catch you next time